Hi everyone, as you probably know, Five Nights at Freddy's is a really popular game series and I've gotten a few requests to build the multi-camera switching setup to replicate that style of gameplay. Now horror games are not my bag, I'm a big baby when it comes to that, so I did fire up Five Nights at Fluffballs, a GBG game that got a lot of attention because of how well made it was. I could think of a few ways you might use a mechanic like this. Maybe you can monitor a building in a CCTV style way to spot things. Or when I was building this, I thought of a sort of tower defense style level from Sly Cooper 3, where you switch between multiple cameras, setting off traps to prevent enemies from getting to you. So let's get started. As I thought, the concept for this build is actually really simple. I have this four room setup on the map each with distinct colors and objects, and I want to be able to switch between them all at will. We'll also be adding a little bit of peeking or moving the camera around at each position. We'll start by setting up four flags. The flag will indicate which of the current cameras we're on. In this case, we're going to have four different camera positions or angles. But you can do more if you alter this method a little bit. We're actually not going to be using the basic game camera that we usually do. We're going to switch to advanced cameras and work with camera position and camera target. We'll take out a camera position node on and a camera target node on. Later on, we'll be messing with the camera angle also. We'll put those to the side and create simple objects to attach them to. You can also move them using the X, Y, and Z inputs that are on the node on, but we're going to use objects instead. We'll pull out a simple object and turn off all of its settings so that it's simply holding a position, and we'll attach them to their respective cameras. Since we're creating a new camera position and camera target for each of these rooms, we're going to need eight total teleports. Duplicate out eight teleport entrances. While I do that, I'll kind of explain another method that you can use. We're using eight total warps because we have four positions for the camera and four positions to look at. But if you wanted to simplify this, you can simply move the camera over to a different room without changing the look at position. That way, you'd save half of these warp nodons. Our method here is the more luxury version, which lets you control the angle and the scene and choose what the player is looking at specifically. So we'll take our flags and we'll connect each flag to one camera position and one camera target. Then we'll attach all of these to their correct nodon and slide things over so that we can keep tabs on what's connected to what. And then we'll switch each teleport ID so that it cascades downwards all the way from A to H. So really, if you wanted to use the simpler method where all the cameras are side by side, you can have a total of eight rooms, but likely you're gonna wanna save some teleport nodons for the things inside your game. Then we'll take our teleport exits and we'll make it so that there are eight of them. Since four camera positions correspond to four camera targets, I'm gonna lay them out so that it's easy for me to not lose track of what is what. Then you just place them in your level. You might want to pair them off so it's easier to remember which position goes with which target. And now we'll go to the camera switching mechanic. We're going to create a really simple one with four buttons, which are the four face buttons. But you can switch these to be the shoulder buttons or anything else that you want. I don't think it really matters whether it's while pressed or on press, but I'm just making sure they're all on press. How you're going to want to wire this is that each button will turn on its flag and it will turn off every other flag. It could be easy to mess this up since there are so many connections going on, so just try your best to keep track. If you do it correctly, it should have this pretty symmetrical pattern at the end. So now we can test it and see that it's working. When we press the button, we'll switch between the camera positions and targets at the same time. The rest is pretty simple. You're going to take these positions and targets and you're going to place them in your level. You might want to set all of them to invisible first so that you don't have those white wireframes or you can do that later so it's easier to keep track of where they are exactly until you're all set with your positions. Alright, so it's working. We can switch between the four positions. I had them a little high up, so I'm going to move them down. And that's, again, the benefit of having all of these teleports is that you can very specifically choose the angles and kind of direct the player attention that way. So I'm just adjusting these. And that looks pretty good. I would probably move the position a little bit lower too, but that's up to taste. Now we're going to add that slight camera movement. You can actually add the camera direction or angle node on that has two inputs, just like the regular camera. But instead of moving freely, it will move relative to the target. So you can take your right stick up, down, and left, right, and connect them into the correct ports. But it'll only move by one degree in each direction. 
So to manipulate that, we'll add a map node on in between the stick and the camera. The input will be 0 to 1 since that's the stick output, but the output range will be 0 to whatever you want the maximum angle to be. In this case, I picked 8. So we can use the right stick to manipulate the camera up to 8 degrees in any direction. So you can see here, you can kind of move around and peek a little bit, which is pretty cool. Now our total nodon usage is at about 60. If you take 20 for the level, that's only about 30 nodon to set up the camera, which leaves you with a vast majority of the nodon to create the logic and the level design.